G'day Legends War, we're sitting in uh, the 640 by Haynes Signature out the front of our warehouse right now because we're packing it, getting ready for a trip north for the Shimano King of Kings event. Um, now look, lots of people over the past year or so um, since we've had the 640 have asked questions what the boat's like um, and we haven't really had the time to give you kind of an honest feedback from our um, side of the story. As fishermen using this as our workhorse, essentially it's our work truck being a boat, obviously we fish out of it. but. Um, we're about to start packing it ready for the trip and I thought, you know what, let's film a bit of it. Let's run you through some of the things that we've loved about the boat, um, some things that are changing in the new models um, and just a, a, a basically a look at a boat that is now over a year old. So we're going to start packing this thing um, and give you a look through it. Well, for us, the most valuable part of um, the storage system in this boat has been the front two hatches here. Um, they are legit bone dry. So they've they've got a rim around it. I think they call it like a, gas, a gasketed system. So no water can actually get in. If it is raining and the water does go through the um, seals here, it runs in the middle, which goes and drains off straight under the deck. So um, these have been legitimately bone dry on every trip that we've done. We've been out in some hideous conditions um, and all of our, basically any of our um, safety gear, our camera equipment, anything that can't get wet, we put in these front two hatches, um, which, are, which have bungs too, and they are legitimately bone dry so that's from us we've been using it for a long time you can see now it's all starting to get a bit of wear and they're still working a treat so this is where we keep all of our um, you know items that can't get wet now in here is where we like to keep a lot of when we do the long range missions there's actually way more storage under here than you can see if I put my hand under there it goes right under um, and when we do big long range missions this is where we put all of our like spare water all of our like chips and all that kind of stuff that can get wet if it does get wet um, but it's a, it's a lot of storage in there we can keep life jackets all that kind of crap moving on to the um, what we use as a as an esky slash kill tank now um, we've used this for obviously feeling full of ice keeping beers cold it's not insulated so the ice won't last for multiple days but you definitely get a full day if not two days of cold water but another thing, this one isn't plumbed, um, but you can get them plumbed, meaning if you know someone who likes to do your comp fishing for brim, or you just like to kind of keep all your fish alive throughout the day so you can maybe get a photo at the end of the day, you can plumb it, which is handy because it's a huge tank and you can fit a handful of um, you know bass, brim, jacks, all that kind of stuff in there. And there's plenty and plenty of room. We've put big massive Spanish and cobia and stuff. So as you can see, the whole front, there's loads and loads of storage. Um, just chuck the lean post back in, which is removable, which is handy for us. Alright, down the back. Now when it, comes to, when it comes to storage down the back of the boat, we've got a side hatch here. Now one change that they've made is this hatch has actually increased in size, so you can fit more in there and you can have another hatch on the other side of the console. Um, I don't know if you saw like a review from the Captain Mag. They said they mentioned that the hatch, this one, is too small, which it probably is. But all the new models have the bigger hatches, and you can get them on both sides. So it means you can put so much stuff under the console here, which is awesome. Um, another thing on the seat here, we've had a few people who have come in when it's been a bit rough, and I've come for a mission. Ultimately, when we're driving, they have to hold onto the seat. Now, if the seat gets wet, it gets a bit slippery. It's a bit dangerous at times. But the new models have a lean, sorry, a grab rail that comes over the top of the seat here, which is obviously if you're, you know, taking three or four people out, even up five, it's a bit rough. You go on flat stick or whatnot. The people back here can hold onto the grab rails that come in the new boats, which is really good. Um, uh, what else to run through? Live bait tank. A few people have mentioned, you know, if, you've, if you're living down south and you know, you're dealing with massive slimy mackerel, big, big live baits that they're not going to survive in there. But I mentioned this in one of the other videos that we've done. It's a circular live bait tank with a high pressure um, pump in there. So it filters water really quickly to more to the point because it's circular, the fish are actually swimming in circles. So you don't need such a large bait tank that you might do if it was, say, square. So we've had probably had about 12 big, big slimies in there, like proper Sydney spec slimies, and they were fine for hours on end. So the live bait tank is really, really efficient. And then on the other side here, um, this is where the deck wash hose is and all the batteries and that kind of stuff. And you can still use it a bit of storage to put like your backpack or whatnot in. And then in terms of the esky, we keep our esky under the seat here. It's not in here at the moment, but it goes under the seat away from everything. So you've got plenty and plenty of floor space. 
rod storage down the side. Um, you can fit four rods in each side, but what we sometimes do is we put multiple in the one. You can see on this here we've got um, two or three rods in that bottom sleeve, so you can fit more than eight rods in here. Um, you can actually fit probably close to, I would say, 15 or so rods, especially if the reels aren't on them. So overall, when it comes to storage, there is plenty of storage on this boat. If you're doing long range missions or you just carry a shitload of tackle, a shitload of rods, trust me, there's enough storage in here. Well, I guess the big question is really, how has the boat been handling? Um, we've been lucky enough to have this boat in pretty much all kinds of conditions, whether it's like big open ocean, east coast swells, North Queensland shop, North Queensland rain squalls, you know, choppy river systems, flat glass conditions, bar crossings, you name it, we've basically done it in the 640. What I can definitely, definitely say is the boat rides exactly how you would expect a Hain Signature ride. Extremely, extremely soft riding. Such a deep um, V throughout the boat means it cuts through any of that swell and chop like a knife. Like seriously, this thing does not slap. Um, obviously, I know that um, if you've owned a Haynes before, you probably realise these boats need to be uh, driven a lot quicker than probably what you would be used to if you've got, say, a more American style boat with a big flare at the front and a flatter rear end. Because this has got a deep V that runs from um, bow to stern, you need to drive these things quick, but that's why they ride so good. Um, it's at rest. Um, it's like any other center console without a T-top. It's not extremely stable like what a cat boat would be, but for us it's perfectly fine. It's got low gunnel, so you can see you can fit your knees under there. Well, I wouldn't call them low. I wouldn't call them high. They're like basically just a perfect size. For us, we do jigging, and if you've got really high sides, you whack your hands and whatnot, so the gunnel height is perfect. Um, in a following sea, it's amazing. Um, sideways chop, we've got trim tabs, which are perfect. So all in all, the boat has been riding absolutely amazing for what we do. Um, look, if you were the kind of person that wanted to own a center console, and have a completely dry ride, obviously opt for a cabin boat. This boat is not a wet boat. It's not, the 543 due to its length is a much wetter boat, what we've noticed, than the 640. It is extremely dry in comparison to the 543, and especially being a center console option with the big Perspex screen. Um, and then if you wanted to make this boat even drier, which a lot of people are doing, you opt for a T-top, and then you can, um, you know, you can have clears around your T-top, and then essentially you're in I would say as close to a cabin boat um, as you're going to get in terms of dryness. So I, I can't really fault the boat. Look, I've been in so many center consoles. We've been in, in a handful of other boats with other people, and this boat honestly rides um, better than anything that we've been in for its size. So if you're looking at a boat like this, something in that six and a half meter range, I think you're going to be hard pressed to find a boat that rides better than the 640. Obviously, there's a huge amount of um, tradition in these boats, being the Hain Signature name. They just they know what they're doing. So if you've got more questions, you can always hit us up like you all do on social media. You can call the shop um, and we'll always give you our honest opinion if you're looking into these boats. But we're going to keep packing because there's about a 12-hour drive ahead to north. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the water.